Hey, what's going on? It's your boy Coach, and this is the Endless Series. Welcome back. Okay, now this week is going to be very information um, rich, and I'm sorry for that. It's unfortunately something we have to go through and a number of things that, uh, topics that we have to discuss and kind of reprogram our paradigm. When I started dieting eight years ago is that I started labeling foods, you know, as good and bad, and really that can bring a number of eating disorders. It's a topic I've brought up, not something I'm going to dive into this time, but just kind of make you aware of why we have to kind of change how we talk about food. So the most important thing at the end of the day is calories in calories out it's how your caloric difference ends up and we don't care if it's say high one day low one day we're going to look at the weeks and i'm going to show you how to do that in future videos the first thing we have to start doing is changing our concept on what foods are and how they're compromised and i'm going to show you a few examples of how this works and if this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, that's all right, because we're going to be talking about it pretty much every week. It's how I try to describe food. I still do have some of the old me that says like, say healthy meal or um, junk food. I try not to do that anymore, but it's something that is really hard on program. And I found that out. Now, I hope you got your food scale and you got your tracking app because those you're going to absolutely need this week. It's something we're always going to be using for, let's say, an extended period of time. So when you start learning about how to create, say, your specific balance that works best for you you're gonna do a number of things you're gonna play around with calories you're gonna play around with macros we're gonna learn all that this is that's why this is 12 weeks this is kind of complex in some senses but don't make it over complicated it's kind of simple in the end and if you stick with it you'll see what I mean and in order to do that you're gonna have to do trial and error it's something that you're gonna have to play around with making your own meal combos now I do have some recipes that will go through things to get you started just so you can understand kind of how to create a meal and that's really the overall goal is to learn how to create meals not all calories are created equal in terms of a deficit there are some foods that are actually nutrient rich and beneficial for your body but they can also push you over whatever that caloric difference you're trying to shoot for is so we have to select them based on you know however we set up our meals and now something that i found and i've tried it both ways is if you say eat all nutrient foods you know you want that extremely healthy diet and all clean you know as they say um that didn't work for me it works for a while and at some point i built food um, intolerances and sensitivities and there was things i couldn't eat without getting sick so as you kind of look over you know protein carbs fats most of you may be familiar with those and really the macros aren't going to give you weight loss but macros are going to be really a key in how you build a meal and how you make it nutrient dense and there's a number of ingredients we can use and various things and we'll go through all that but i just want to kind of as an overview just kind of explain the concept and what my philosophy is behind it so we saw that nutrient density, caloric density, but I didn't really explain them, right? So there's a number of foods you can see there and how I describe them. Some people would say, well, blueberries are healthy. They're good for you. I don't use that. I use it's a low calorie dense food that's high in nutrient density. And that's how it is. Remember, it's neither good or bad because if you eat blueberries in excess and you're trying to be in a calorie deficit, you're going to be in a surplus. You have to relearn how to label these foods and how to say associate them in context to make sure that there's nothing you can prevent or there's nothing you're really restricted on in the long run because what's most important in making this a lifestyle is unprogramming those things well i can't have that or i won't have that or ooh, that'll ruin my diet ooh, that'll give me a bad day we have to unlearn that it's something that most of us that have been dieting or if we struggle with dieting for many years you may have those things and the reason i know that is because i had them okay and so here we go now we're talking about nutrition labels and we kind of brought it up last week now we're going to look at them a little bit deeper when you look at them there's some figures you're going to look for and as we learn to build meals it's going to be really important that you kind of look that you look at it in terms of macros but overall is always going to be the calories and i do have a set formula let's say that kind of gets you started with a baseline of how to make meals i found out this number basically having other people try meals give me opinions on what they thought was filling what tastes good and i think that's a pretty good window for a majority of folks three to five hundred calories if you make it more nutrient dense you can get away with a little bit less but if you want to make it more flavorful and like actually more enjoyable you're going to have to add a little bit of calories so that's just one of the kind of the trade-offs and we'll learn how to do that now there's things like micronutrients and we kind of brushed on that if you want to go look at ingredients and micronutrients Go do your research because in the end, I just know that I'm not so focused on that, especially when I'm looking for fat loss. I'm looking for a calorie deficit and most specifically eating foods that I really like or finding some sort of balance that really doesn't feel like suffering. That's kind of the overall goal. And I think one of the biggest uh, things that comes up when you're trying to lose weight and for most people, it's that hunger. And I'm a 
firm believer of keeping hunger like way in the back of the mind because I don't experience it because either I like my foods, they're filling enough, or I have enough variety where I just don't feel like I'm missing out. That's kind of really the goal in all of this is to figure out what blend is going to make sure of not just nutrition, but also activities that make you feel your best and like you're not losing out or missing out on anything, but you're seeing progress over time and getting towards your goals, which aren't necessarily in weeks or sometimes it's, you know, maybe many months or maybe a year. And the kitchen is where you're going to find your success. And we'll talk about that next week. Okay, so in the system, one of the first things you're going to notice is that I do use prepackaged foods, and I think that's fine. Really, when you're making a meal, it comes down to if it fits the mold or the formula I kind of have in mind. So really, protein is kind of the thing we want to hit first, just because it's one of the hardest macros to hit. And it's the one I think people struggle to get in the most. But if you look at something like this, a deli turkey, there's been a number of diets I've been on that would say, no, that's uh, prepackaged uh, meats or there's bad, you know, deli is bad. I don't believe in that. And you'll notice this is a primary protein source. And if you see right there there's 14 grams of protein in a very small serving two ounces so this is a low calorie dense food in my opinion and it's going to fill you up now here's another one it's a protein source let's say it's a panko chicken breast so now it is in the freezer aisle and so that's fine at the same time if you notice there's some extras added into it that make it say more caloric so this one doesn't have the caloric density but there's other things that have already been put in there to make it taste good so it's one of those options you have that you know you could use this if you needed to and you didn't want to prepare fresh chicken breast now that panko chicken what i'd probably do is put in the air fryer for the best taste but has the 20 grams of protein which is good and one thing i would probably do with this is make it into a wrap so there's these low carb say tortillas and you could go ahead and pair in something like some lettuce some tomatoes pickles you know just some veggies to give it volume maybe a little mustard that's my preference uh, but just something on there and you're sitting around on under 300 calories so you could even have a side with that of fruit if you wanted to so now up next we have something this little uh, breakfast sandwich looking thing and it's got say 17 grams of protein so a number of ways we could go at this one but we're really on at 190 calories so pretty low it's probably a smaller sandwich so what i'm going to probably want to do is pair this with something else cups of greek yogurt that's one of the smart things to do is just get something that's a high protein source get that in and maybe add some fruit or something in there because this is pretty low in carbohydrates so it looks like it's got plenty of fat so we don't need to worry about that but or we could even do things like add turkey bacon onto it or we could just have two of them and that's 34 grams of protein it's a lot higher in fat so if it's filling you up and it's satiating then you know that's kind of the goal and that's exactly what we could do with something like this there's a number of ways to spin it biggest drawback is going to be cost because you only get eight sandwiches and i think this is like 10 bucks so it's going to get to be pretty pricey okay and here's one of the things i'm talking about we see right out of the gate it's got that organic right non-gmos things like that but the downfall on this one's 340 calories for one burrito which isn't going to be very big it's only got 11 grams of protein so now we're going to have to go figure that out and get it from another source because that's too low to make a meal and really since we're already at 340 calories trying to add you know 100 of those and just pure protein it's not easy and so therefore that's why i would call this item a high calorie dense food it's something that's probably not going to fill me up it's going to be fairly small for the calories but i'd probably give it some props for being nutrient dense it has some things in there that looks like could be beneficial for our bodies we just have to figure out really how to pump the protein up and get full so i'd be using a lot of vegetables maybe a side salad with some of that deli turkey or something like that just to make sure that i've gotten my fill after i'm done with this meal this is a great example of hey i got all kinds of buzzwords on the front the advertising hey i look at it's supposed to be healthy right well at the same time this is a high calorie dense food there is a lot of calories for what you get there's only seven servings in this bag and i've had these before and i could probably eat the whole bag in a sitting so it's something i probably wouldn't buy if i wanted to be in a deficit however if you wanted to pair this with something say some kind of sandwich where you needed say more fat if you're just using less fats in your other meals that would be fine now here's one i got to talk about just because the world of keto and low carb diets have been con kind of a thing over the last few years and that's not a bad thing i think it's kind of good to you know explore different foods now this is a cauliflower crust pizza and i've had these before but if you look at that label you get two pizzas in the entire box and each pizza is at almost a thousand calories and you get 50 grams of protein about per pizza so that's not a very good bargain now one thing you can do is put toppings on there say you know if you sizzled up some lean ground beef or some ground turkey that could make this stretch a lot further and that's probably what i would do with something like this 
Okay, and let's put it to the test. We got another high calorie dense food. This is a fried rice. We already know it's gonna have a lot of preservatives. It's prepackaged, whatever. We don't really care because in the end, we gotta make sure the calories align with what a, makes a meal filling. And now this one, you'll notice per serving, you're not gonna get as much protein as you could, but there's a way I would change this. This is obviously gonna have a lot of costs associated. It's what makes it fit the mold. So if I had, say, some of this shrimp, I can add a serving of this, cook this up. You can saute this over a stove top pan for a few minutes and have them done. So you could add even more shrimp pump up the protein and it's kind of keeps the integrity of the meal and i'm probably also going to add some vegetables as well to give it a little more volume i'm not trying to condone to eat all frozen foods or all these different pre-packaged meals i think it's fine to do that is my point and it depends on your schedule your time your budget there's a lot of things that uh, kind of come into this so i obviously prefer to cook let's say freshly prepared foods and some of the fresh meats and a lot of that when you're getting started it's not always easy and that's kind of what i want to show out of the gate is there's a number of things you can do out there that or make it way easier to do this and so you don't always have to think just to shop in the perimeters and just the whole foods you can have a combination if that's uh, going to work better for you and that's kind of the way you know depending on our schedules and how busy we are sometimes i have to do that and there's other times where it's like i prefer to have the say the freshness of regular or let's just say of wholer foods and less processed foods and so there's really no perfect way to do this finding those uh combinations that you like and you'll figure it out as you go it just takes time and if you're still there with me i appreciate I know it's a lot of information. I know it's really long, but just a reminder of some of those uh, goals this week, some things you're going to want to do. Really, it's all about learning. That's kind of what we're trying to achieve. So I hope I still have you tuned in because I have someone who joined me to discuss his lifestyle and what he finds in a healthy lifestyle. Thanks for coming on, Ricky. I really appreciate you. No problem, coach. Football really got me into fitness because I mean I wanted to be as big as I could possibly get, especially in high school. Nowadays I don't really care so much about size and being bulky or anything like that. I'm just trying to stay healthy and I don't want to get, let's say, large because I have a wife and I do care about <laughs> what she gets, you know? So. Oh, absolutely uh, walking, specifically during the evening time frame. I like walking during the sunset helps me think, uh, therapeutic, but other than that, just regular gym. I would have to say my wife is my biggest motivator. She goes to the gym to look good for me. I want to stay active so I can look good for her. If you're going to the gym, do not focus on what other people might think of you. So for example, maybe you're not where you wanna be, Go to the gym for you and not for other people. I know I said my reasons were because I'm going for my wife. In the end, if you know, you gotta focus on yourself and, and just don't think about what other people think of you, if that makes sense. They're one of their fears of going to the gym is the judgment. So I love that. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, Ricky. Appreciate it. No problem, coach. All right, we'll see you on the next interview. Uh, yeah.